it seems that everyone's talking about the Huawei Mate 20 Pro as it is one of the most complete smartphones of 2018. Well, I agree with that and if you want to check out my detailed review of the Pro model, you will find all the links down below. However, the Mate 20 is about $200 cheaper and it has most of the features of the Pro model, but it also has a few flaws to consider. In this video, I will take a look at all the pros and cons of this device after using the phone for one month. I will also take a look at the similarities and key differences to the Mate 20 Pro so we can make a better buying decision yourself if you are interested in any of these phones. Even though this is not a fresh review, let's do a quick unboxing. Inside the packaging you get all the usual items and some extras include a pair of earphones. In addition, my phone shipped with a soft TPU case, but the inclusion of this accessory depends on the region or market. I've been using the Huawei Mate 20 Pro since the official launch and I have to tell you that the Mate 20 is similar in a lot of ways. It's made of glass and aluminum, the blue color option has a nice textured finish and a special coating that does not attract fingerprints and smudges so easily like conventional glass. Just like the Mate 20 Pro, the Mate 20 is sturdy and well made and I'm yet to see any scratches on it after using the phone for quite some time. The main difference between the Mate 20 and the Pro is the feeling in the hand. The Mate 20 is significantly wider than the Pro model due to a larger display that also has a slightly different aspect ratio. That display uses IPS LCD technology as opposed to AMOLED screen found on the Mate 20 Pro. On the other hand, the panel is really nice and sharp, colors are vibrant and I had no issues seeing the display outdoors. Oh, by the way, the Mate 20 has a significantly smaller notch as opposed to the Mate 20 Pro. The Mate 20 has a slimmed down triple camera setup that is made in collaboration with Leica. I will talk about the image quality in just a bit. We also have a super fast and accurate fingerprint reader which is implemented on the back of the device whereas the Mate 20 Pro has the scanner implemented under the display. The face recognition works quite well on the Mate 20, however, it's less accurate than on the Mate 20 Pro which has an excellent face scanner. Other features include a headphone jack that provides very good sound quality, IR blaster, a hybrid dual SIM card slot, an IP53 certification meaning that the phone is splash proof and dust resistant, in comparison the Mate 20 Pro has a higher IP68 rating. Finally, the Mate 20 has a dual speaker system that produces balanced and rich audio. Here is a quick sample. Just before we start talking about hardware and software, I wanted to show you guys a very useful AnyTrans app that is made by iMobi and I wanted to say thanks for sponsoring this video. In short, this app allows you to transfer Android device data and files with just one click. With AnyTrans for Android, you can move over your essentials all at once to any Android device seamlessly including photos, messages, contacts, videos and etc. Also, you can just select certain needed items to the new phone and your data is totally secure and private since any trans is designed with triple protection. In addition, this app enables you to transfer content from iOS to Android device with just a single click. I love a simple and intuitive user interface. After you install an app to your laptop, the Android app will be installed automatically. I transferred my phone's data to my MacBook and vice versa very quickly and without any issues. Also file manager is just so much better than the outdated Android file manager I have been using for years. All in all, the AnyTrans app is a great all-in-one solution if you want to quickly transfer files from one phone to another, clone the device or transfer files between your laptop and mobile device. This app is free to use but if you want to unleash its full potential, the pro version costs $39.99 US. As usual, you'll find all the links down below the video. Great specifications of the Mate 20 assure excellent gaming performance. 
In fact, the new Mate Series phones are the first Android devices that use a 7 nanometer CPU. I played quite a few 3D games on the highest graphic settings to push the hardware to its limits and there was no stutter, no lag and the graphics looked nice. In addition, the phone does not get hot even after 30 minutes of gaming. Overall, you get a flagship grade gaming performance, just like with the Mate 20 Pro. Just like the Pro model, the Mate 20 ships with the EMUI 9, which is based on Android 9. As usual to Huawei phones, there are tons of features, tweaks, settings, navigation methods and customization options to play with. Just to name a few, I like changing the transition effects, themes and I use a few smart features like knocking on the screen to take a screenshot. My favorite way of navigating through the UI is using gestures. I found it to be really convenient for one-hand use and it takes just a moment to get used it. Just like the Mate 20 Pro, the Mate 20 is a super fast and smooth phone and I can assure you that after using both devices for a long time on a daily basis. No matter what you do with the phone, no matter how many apps you're going to install, the new Mates just fly and I'm yet to see either phone stutter or lag. I have to mention that I tested the camera on a dark and cloudy autumn day, meaning that the lighting conditions were pretty bad. The overall image quality using the Leica branded camera system is very good. You have the flexibility to choose between 2 times optical zoom or use wide angle lens, which is probably my favorite. Pictures usually come out nice and detailed and the colors are quite accurate. I compared the quality to the Mate 20 Pro and the difference is negligible but the latter phone usually takes pictures with warmer colors and a bit more detail. On the other hand, the Mate 20 Pro has an advantage as it offers 3x optical and 5x hybrid zoom whereas the Mate 20 has only 2x optical zoom. Low light image quality is very good either if you take pictures using the auto or a dedicated night mode. Just like the Mate 20 Pro, the Mate 20 allows you to take long exposure shots without using a tripod and the results are simply amazing. Portrait shots usually look really nice as the object or subject is nicely separated from the background with almost no artifacts and the bokeh looks creamy. Selfies look nice, they are sharp, detailed and the colors are quite accurate. Selfie portrait shots look nice too as there are no severe artifacts around the subject and pictures will look nice on social media. Just like on the Pro model, the 4K video has quite a lot of detail and sharpness. However, there is some jello effect going on where you are panning the phone, which is quite frustrating. On the other hand, 1080p footage is nice and smooth. 1080p selfie video looks great as it is smooth and stable. Finally, the sound recording quality is pretty good. The battery life has been fantastic. On average, I was able to get over 8 hours of screen on time while using the phone quite intensively. My record screen on time was about 12 hours when I used the device just for the basic stuff like web browsing and social media. The phone ships with a regular fast charger which fully charges the phone in about 1 hour and 10 minutes. In comparison, the Mate 20 Pro ships with a 40 watts super fast charger that charges the phone in less than 1 hour. The Mate 20 offers ultra-fast 4.5G network speeds, excellent signal reception, great call quality, super-fast Wi-Fi and dual-frequency GPS that I found to be very accurate both for driving and walking. Also, there is NFC and plenty of sensors on board. The Huawei Mate 20 is a solid flagship smartphone for a lot of reasons, but let's summarize all the pros and cons. I love the design, excellent build, great display, excellent all-around performance, very good cameras and solid battery life. The main shortcomings are that there is the so-called jello effect in 4K video, there is no wireless charging and the water and dust resistance rating could be higher. At the end of the day, the Mate 20 is a great and cheaper alternative to the Mate 20 Pro as it has a ton of premium features. After using the Mate 20 for quite some time, I think this is a very solid flagship smartphone overall, despite a few shortcomings.
What do you think about the Huawei Mate 20? Would you buy this phone or would you choose another device? As always, use the comment section down below, like the video if you liked it, drop me a comment down below if you have any questions, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And finally, it was Linus, thank you for watching and see you soon.